Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math lesson. Today we're going to be jumping into exponential functions. We've covered rational functions quite a bit, so I think it's fair that we move on to something else. Before we do that though, be sure to go check out jakesmathlessons.com slash precalculus dash study dash guide. You can see that up in the upper right hand corner of your screen, or you can scan that QR code. That'll take you to the page that tells you all about my brand new precalculus study guide. It's going to be a huge help to you as you study for tests, do homework, all that kind of stuff. So definitely go check that out. But let's go ahead and jump into the content here. So I want to talk a bit today about the one to one property and how to use it to solve some sort of equation like this two to the x minus three equals 16. So real quick, just to kind of provide a little bit of a background on this kind of a problem. This right here, two to the x minus three is an example of an exponential function. So an exponential function is one where you have basically some base, some constant number base like a for example, um, raised up to something with an x in the power. There could be other stuff here. You may even have another number multiplied out front. Um, so usually in those cases, the form that you would actually see this is a times b to the x. And like I said, there could be other things like a plus k over here, a minus h you know, up in the exponent. There's all sorts of other kind of like transformations, translations that you can apply to this. The most basic version of an exponential function though would just be some of that power. So something like this. Really, whenever you're trying to solve an equation like this though, like if you have, um, you know, this example that we have right here, two to the X minus three equals 16. The best way in a lot of cases is to use the one-to-one -one property. So let's take a second to just kind of talk about what that one-to-one -one property is. So let me just jump down here real quick. We'll touch on this. So the one-to-one -one property just says, if for any a greater than zero and any a that does not equal one. So basically any a that's not, you know, greater than zero except for one. So any positive number except for one. If you have a to the x equals a to the y, this will only work if x equals y. So as long as the base of these two exponents here is some positive number besides one, so if it's like one to the x equals one to the y, that doesn't work. This, the one to one property does not apply here because anything to the first power is one. So no matter what your x and y are, this is gonna be true. But as long as that base is not one and a positive number, so do keep in mind it has to be a positive number base, three to the x, for example, three to the y, these are only gonna be equal if x equals y. So basically the reason it's called the one-to-one -one property is because any exponential function, any b to the x power, b to the y power, you know, whatever the case is, this is a one-to-one -one function, which means, you know, on a graph, it looks something like this. Roughly, it's gonna have this kind of shape. It's a one-to-one -one function, which means for any input, there's one output, and for any output, there's only one input that will get you there. So another way to think of it is an exponential function passes both the vertical line test, right? No matter where we put a vertical line through here, it's only going to intersect with our function in one spot. And it also passes the horizontal line test. No matter where we put a horizontal line, it's only going to intersect with our function in one spot. So that means this exponential function has an inverse function which really what that means is this is a function, it's inverse as a function, that tells you it, the function itself is one-to-one. -one. So one output matches to one out, one input, I'm sorry, one input matches to exactly one output and every output matches to exactly one input. So that's important because what it allows us to do is use this one-to-one -one property to say, if we have some specific output, so if we have some value for three to the x power, for example, there must be exactly one x value that gets us the output that we're looking for, which in this case would be, you know, whatever's on the other side of the equation. So how does that relate to the problem that we had here? Let's circle back up to that. So if we have this sort of a, an equation here, two to the x minus three equals 16, the reason why an exponential function being one to one is important here is this tells us that this exponential function that we have on the left side of our equation here 
there must be one specific x value that makes this whole thing equal 16. There must be one specific input that will get us to the output of 16 that we want. Okay, so how we can actually use this one-to-one -one property is to say, okay, we have two raised up to some power, x minus three on the left side of our equation. To use the one-to-one -one property, what we wanna do is figure out how we can rewrite this right side of our equation, how we can rewrite 16 to be two raised up to some other power as well. So that's what you wanna think about. How can you basically write both sides of your equation as the same base raised up to some other power? So essentially you're just kind of taking, you know, leaving the left side of our equation in this case, there may be cases where you need to adjust both sides of your equation. And I'll be doing some more examples of problems kind of like this. We'll, we'll try and cover one like that uh, in the next few days. But in this case, we can leave the left side of our equation as two to the X minus three. And what we want to do is think about how to rewrite the right side of our equation to be two raised up to some other power. Because if we can do that, then we can use the one to one property to say that the powers must be equal to each other. So that's why the one to one property is nice. So how can you rewrite 16 as two raised up to some power? Or in other words, what power do you have to raise two to to get 16? Well, 16 is just two to the, well, I mean, we can kind of break it down basically. I mean, think about it. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. So if we do two times itself four times, that gets us 16. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. So we got two to the fourth power, because there's four twos here, is 16. So we write 16 as two to the fourth power. Now we can apply the one-to-one -one property. So the one-to-one -one property tells us if we have two to some power equals two to some power, the powers themselves must be equal. So x minus three must equal four, okay? Now we have an equation that probably looks a little bit more familiar to you of how to solve something like this. In this case, we can just add three to both sides and get x equals seven. So like I said, do be sure to go check out my pre-calculus study guide, jakesmathlessons.com slash pre-calculus dash study dash guide, or scan this QR code in the upper right hand corner of your screen. And if you want to keep this brain train rolling, I did just finish going over rational functions. Just go click on that video over there and uh, we can learn more about those. Thanks and see you next time.